adults. What is going on, hey, people? Hey, hey. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We're so excited to have you in the mix with us tonight. Hey, if we haven't met yet, my name is Camila Buchanan, and tonight's special because I have with me my wife, Emily Buchanan. Hey, guys. Four months into this thing. How you feeling? I feel awesome. I'm so, so excited for tonight. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be so good. Hey, we made it. Uh, we're in the building. You're here. We're with you in the chat. That's why we have our phones out here on YouTube. Engage with us throughout the night uh, as we're in here. Now, last time we were together, we were in our oval, and that was sweet because we got about two of our family groups in the building, and it was really special. Tonight, though, we have 20 plus of our family groups hey, in here right now. Can I get a shout for social Spread distancing? Spread out all over our auditorium. So hyped to it have looks, everyone in here. It looks amazing in here. Don't worry if you didn't make it in. If you're in a family group, we're going to fight to make a way for you to get in by the end of the year. We made it to fall. That's something to celebrate as well. I love fall. How do you feel about it? I love it. I mean, I'm white. I'm a girl. How can I not love fall? You, and I love Let's you anyway. I love Thank you as you. a white girl loving fall. Thank That's you. completely fun. Um, we love fall and we love the holidays that come with we do. the we do. fall. Who likes Halloween in here? Anybody? Halloween fans? Halloween. So we aren't really big on Halloween because we're both scaredy cats. No, no, it's because I love Jesus. Okay, That's he's what it afraid. Is. No. But me too. It's okay. We have the power of the I Holy Spirit that. in us. Praise but God. something I do love about Halloween is the candy. So in the chat, if you're in the chat, Let we want to see you guys engaging with us. What is your favorite Halloween candy? Camilo? My favorite Halloween candy, uh, Kit Kats, but that's all the time. Favorite Halloween Basic. specific, candy corn. I'll say it. I'll come I out. I love it. I know it's divisive. Some people. Make some noise in the room if you love candy corn. About candy corn. A few. Who I, right now I if you like the hate candy, candy corn? corn. That got a little more. That got a little more interaction. My friend behind the camera just put his a thumbs down. So I guess that's not a winner. Um, what, what else do we guys? love about fall? What's hey, I got chat? a question. Halloween's coming up next week. Do you know what you are going to uh, dress up as? Let us know that in the chat. Are we uh, too old for that or not? Nah? No, I we're think not. Nah. Too old. What are we gonna be this year? Do you know? I haven't even thought about that yet. I will think about this for hours. It's she very always comes up with something when we're a couple and it's it's fun. It's great. Hey, keep engaging in the chat. Let us know all those questions. Candy Raina corn, joined Raina, with me yes. with candy corn. We love it. Keep engaging in the chat because it pays to be in the chat. In fact, yeah. uh, if you are engaging both now and hosting during worship, uh, when the word is being brought, whoever is engaging throughout the chat, our team is watching and someone is going away with a $50 Amazon gift card just for engaging in the to chat. to be in okay? the chat. I see y'all are kind of starting to pipe up now. Now, now I see you want to pipe up. I see mm -hmm. what you did. You, you missed Prime Day. That's okay. The Lord got you. Just engage in the chat. That does not mean troll the chat, okay? Uh, we don't need any of that. We're grown here, but engage in the chat. Give a good amen. Put up some praise hand emojis. It's going to be a good time. You feeling some, good? Yeah, I feel awesome. Something like else that you need to know. Well, if you aren't in the room, we really miss you, but this is how we feel about it. We wish you were here. Wish you were here. We got new merch, y'all. This is our merch. You guys need to, it's on sale, $20 tonight. Link is in description. And if you're here, I think you can also get it, right? Yeah, if you're in the room, you can go grab that right after uh, in the oval. But if you're online, you can click the link in the description. If you're on Instagram, you can go to the link in our bio and grab a shirt. Only $20, wish you were here. And then the front says, there's no place like home. And Which there really is isn't. Us. We can't wait till you're home here I love it. with us. Something else I wanted to make sure you are aware of is something that we're calling CORE. This is new to Passion City, but there are these nine uh, practical theological discipleship classes that you can engage in for free that we're kicking Which is off amazing, to tomorrow be clear. night. So we're going to have different rounds from month to month different classes like biblical finances. I need that for my student loans. There's classes like we essential theology. There's classes like uh, Bible study methods. There's nine courses that you can go through for free. They're gonna be in person and then in a couple months, we're gonna make it available for you online. This is what you wanna be a part of. While school's a little wonky right now, some of us are out of school already, we're young adults, but we all could learn from this. I think you signed up for one. Yeah, you guys can sign up. It's right there on the screen. I signed up for practical theology. Is Essential that... theology. Essential theology. Which is practical, so that's fine. Essential. That's another name. We can rename it. Yeah, hey. I'm super excited, so come learn with me. Come learn with us. It's going to be amazing. Tonight is going to be incredible. We're kicking off a brand new collection 
called Kingdom Come. Our yeah, friends. Yeah, let me hear you guys. Yep, yep, yep. Our friend Nate Butler is in the building. Hey, He's bringing the word tonight. Be very it's going to be powerful. We're excited about that. We're excited for our friend Ashley Seal is getting baptized yeah. tonight. And we're really hyped about that. And then none other than Sean Curran himself just dropped a single Friday. He's leading us in so worship. Huge. It's going to be a good time. We're so excited. I'm ready. I'm ready. Why don't you pray for us and let's get started. Yeah. So Jesus, thank you. We cannot thank you enough to be able to stand in your presence. And I don't mean stand in this room, yep. but stand in your presence. No matter where we're at, if you're under the sound of our voices right now, that means that you have something for us. Yes. So whoever can hear us right now, whoever's with us, whoever's um, on the link, just let us release. Let us let go. Let us yep. let go of what we've been holding on to so tightly. Let us let go of the things we've been trying to make work and let you do your work. Yes. Lord, we believe that we are gonna walk away from tonight completely different. And where anyone is lacking faith, let us stand right now in the gap for their faith, because I believe for them. Let tonight be a testimony. Let tonight change, change everything. We love you, we praise you. We're so, so excited, we're so faithful. Yeah, just have your way. Yeah. In your name we pray, amen. Amen, hey, take the time right now, send the link to somebody, share it. Let's get started. Your presence is the answer. Your presence is the answer. Your presence is. Your presence is the answer. Your presence is the answer. to feel that already like something is stirring <laughs> PCC young adults the gutsy ones the wild ones the kingdom seekers the kingdom carriers we're gonna chase the presence of God tonight are you willing to go somewhere new? Like maybe somewhere you just have not been before? Are you willing to lay down whatever it is that's in the way of God taking you somewhere new? Maybe you're on the stream and you're just sitting in your room. <laughs> God is right there. God is right there with us. But if we're gonna go anywhere tonight, we gotta get one thing straight. And it's this, the presence of God is enough for us. The presence of God is enough. The presence of God is enough for you. Do you believe that? Can you receive that? You were made from the presence of God. You were made for the presence of God. All of life flows from the presence of God. So that's what we're seeking for. That's what we're singing to. That's what we're listening for tonight. It's like the woman who pours out all her oil on the feet of the king. And the disciples, they don't know what to make of it. They get a little Say, they're not thinking right. They're not thinking about the presence. They're thinking about the transaction. But Jesus says, hey, this is what love looks like, hey. Hey, this is about transformation. This is what love looks like. It's what love looks like. That's a woman who's seeking the presence of God, who's laying all up for the presence of God. It's a thing tonight, God. We want to go where you want to take us. We receive the gift of life. We press on as kingdom seekers. So sing every gift. Every breath it is a gift. Every moment is a treasure. Oh, yeah. 
to say this All my past and my regrets My present and my future Can you lay it all down? Can you lay it all down? Every table now Every table is a feast Every heartbeat is an altar Yeah, he's got plans for you, man
Doesn't scare you now, no, no, no. You walk through the desert, you made it safe and sound. Hey, it didn't scare you then, and it doesn't scare you now. Yes, you walk through the desert, you made it safe and sound. It didn't scare you then, oh no, and it doesn't. Oh, come on now. Try this in. Your goodness, your goodness is running after. It's running after me. Oh. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me.
how you start. That's a real good place to start. Tell him who he is. Yes, you're my author, my maker, my ransom, my savior, my refuge, my hiding place, my helper. You're my helper. Oh, yeah, tell him. You know, there's more. There's more.
Okay. Everybody on the stream, I hope you're sweating like we're sweating. I think God's a big fan of the process. You know, his promises, they're real strong. They're not designed to help us walk around the process. They're designed to carry us through it because they're strong enough. So there's this crazy thing out in Arizona called the biosphere. It was built way back in the 80s. And they conduct all these experiments there. It's cool stuff. But one time, they wanted to construct the perfect ecosystem, perfectly climate controlled, perfectly safe. And they just wanted to see how life would respond. And the trees, they started growing. At first, they were growing faster than any trees in the wild. But here's the thing, they reached this point where they would just fall over. And I'm not talking about just one or two of the trees. I mean, every single tree got to this age where it literally couldn't support its own weight and it would just fall over and the scientists were trying to figure out what the problem was and uh, they finally realized that there was no wind there's no wind translation there was no tension there was no unforeseen circumstances. There were no unexpected pivots to the plan. There were no reasons for the roots to learn their purpose, which was to grow deep. Yeah. That's the type of thing that'll freak you out and mess you up if you let it. Because if you're like me, you take all the tension of life and you try to push it away as if it's the thing that's gonna kill you. And it might be the thing keeping you alive. So I think God's a fan of the process. Because he knows it's the only way we grow. And his promises are strong enough to carry us when the wind blows. Because he wants our roots to grow a little deeper. Maybe, just maybe, God isn't just concerned with us growing quickly, he's concerned with us growing rightly. 
he's gonna be right there through every step. So we're gonna sing a song about that. Sometimes it's hard to sing in faith, but a little faith goes a long way. And maybe we just need our roots to grow a little deeper tonight, this year. So don't fight it.
been God for a really long time. Everything's going to be all right. That can, that can sound um, cute or it can sound fun. But I need to make sure we understand tonight that it's, it's fact. It's, it's truth. It actually trumps facts. It, it's truth. I don't know what the facts may be. The facts may not be all right, but the truth is everything's going to be all right because he's been God for a long, long time. A long time. He's been faithful for a long time. Jesus, thank you. Thank you for meeting us here. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you that we can trust you. That, that's what you want to tell somebody tonight, that they can trust you. That's what someone's been struggling with tonight. I, I don't know if I can trust him, but we can. Our story has an empty grave. We can trust you. We can trust you. Jesus, speak tonight like only you can. You're what we're chasing after. You are the finish line. I don't know where people are tuning in from. I don't know where people are watching from, but that's what's true over them tonight. I don't know how things look tonight. I don't know what the facts are tonight, but that's what's true over them tonight. And we thank you for that. Holy Spirit move tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey. Like I said earlier, my name is Camilo. I get to be a part of the team getting to lead the way here at Young Adults at Passion City Church. And we're so excited having about 20 plus of our family groups in the room right now with us. This is something new for us. We just got started uh, with family groups and it's been amazing so far. For a lot of people, this is their first time in the building because family groups is all they've known of our church. And there's still a place for you to get in involved in that. If you want to, you can Email us at youngadults at passioncitychurch.com or follow us on Instagram, DM us, and uh, we, we would love to get in touch with you, PCC underscore young adults. I don't want to keep going too much without uh, getting a full sense of what's happening here because we, we, we're, we can believe that truth because we've seen that truth. We've tasted and seen that the Lord really is good. And tonight, we love stories of life change. We love stories of transformation. And last week, we got to hear one of those from our friend Lori, who's on our team, who gets married in four days, people. Her and her fiance are right over there. We're excited about that, but we want to keep that going. And in just a second, we're going to hear another story of life change. And this one's really special uh, because it's a, a baptism that we're all going to get to be a part of. Uh, someone who joined a, a family group who found Passion City not too long ago. We're going to hear her story right now. So Kirsten and Ashley, let's go to you. This is my friend Ashley. Ashley is a student at Kennesaw State University. And when Ashley was young, she knew about God, but her family didn't go to church and um, she felt far from him growing up. Sometimes she would turn to God for a quick fix, but her heart was far from him. As she entered high school and college, she found herself believing all of the lies that culture would sell her, particularly about her worth and her relationship with guys. Earlier this summer, she found herself at a breaking point, like many of us in 2020. She, uh, her heart was numb, and she found herself just trying to find anything she could to fill the void in her heart. And all the while, before she even knew to reach out to God, he was already reaching out to her. She started to see that all along, nothing would fill those voids in her heart except him. And so it was all alone in her room one night that Ashley gave up striving and she finally gave her heart and her life to Jesus and went from death to life. She found passion online, started coming to church, and in the process, she heard about the young adults room in the house. She didn't know, it's awesome, she didn't know anyone, but she signed up for a family group. And now she meets weekly with 13 other girls who are following in their faith journey together towards Jesus. <laughs> Shout out to the girls in the back, I love it. She has just found in this season of singleness that God is healing her heart. She has found that in places where she had bitterness and anger before, that it's been replaced with forgiveness and with peace. 
And God is using opportunities that he's put before Ashley to share that hope and life that she's found in Jesus with others. So I'm so thrilled for you. It is because Christ died and rose for you and because you've put your faith in him. It is my joy today to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. time can we just say congratulations to Ashley all in the chat that's amazing so proud of you uh, tonight is just getting started if you're tuning in we're so thankful that you're here uh, sticking around with us one more time can we just give it up for Sean Curran coming down to hang with us for a minute you feel good feel good I feel good you're always gonna catch me singing when Sean's in the room. Um, just kidding, when the Holy Spirit's in the room, praise God. Uh, tonight is gonna be so, so good. We have a lot to go um, as we kick off our new collection, Kingdom Come. Uh, but we needed to stop for a quick second. We told you, uh, if you were in the IG live right before that we had a big announcement, we've been advertising that, that, that we have a big announcement. And so uh, if you're unaware, um, our leader for the past uh, little while, over 2020, Reed Moore, who's an incredible man, one of my best friends in the whole world, love him so much. Uh, he has stepped away from leading at Passion and Passion Young Adults uh, in this time. He has an amazing opportunity to be a lead pastor at a church uh, not too far from here in our city. And so we're so excited for him. And we just want to say thank you, Reed, if you're watching this room. Just want to say thank you. We love you all in the chat. You can let him know. But I am excited because uh, that means that I get to introduce to you a couple who uh, has been a part of Passion since the very beginning. Uh, if you're in the room and wherever in students or on the chat and wherever in Passion students, you probably know them because they pretty much started Passion students. And we're excited because at this time they're stepping in uh, to take over and help cast vision, help lead, help pastor this room of our house. So. Everyone's already standing, but if you're watching at home, go ahead and stand up, make a ovation for Brett and Ansley Yonker, our new leaders! How are you, how are you, how are you? How you guys feeling? Feel great. Feeling good, y'all look good? Thank you, well, Ansley, style yeah. icon. She is, she oh, yeah. is. We all take notes Yeah, every she just week. got her nails done, guys, by the way. I drive a minivan, okay? <laughs> yeah. But your mask has tie-dye, so it like, which matches your shirt that has tie-dye. Fashion icon, as we were saying. Yeah. What do y'all think about tonight? This is incredible. Are you kidding? It's so good to be back in the room, right? Yeah. yeah. And if you're, um, 
If you're at home, we wish you were here, but it's so amazing, even just watching on YouTube, there's, there's like, you know, over 100 people watching right now just engaged in what's happening. Yep. It's so amazing. And a lot of those having watch parties in family yep. groups, so. Yep. So excited. What are you guys um, feeling about tonight, where we're going, and just, what makes you so excited about stepping into this room of our house? Passion, young adults, 18 to 25 year olds. Why are you so passionate about that age? Yeah, well, we just want to say we're super humbled and really honored to be able to be here. Um, like you said, we've been around students for a long, long time. Yeah. It's really weird. I feel old when I said long, long. That was too much. It was just one long. <laughs> just one, one long. long. Uh, but we're really, really excited and I love Reed and so excited for this opportunity that him and his family have to step yeah. into. Uh, but really, just as we've been watching you and the rest of the team and what God has been building specifically over the course of this year, yeah. Yeah. I think is really, really special. I love that uh, this room of our house is experiencing a lot of uh, the same type of life uh, changes at the same time. Right. Like there's no other space in all of Passion City Church that we're kind of like going through it all together. And um, I'm really excited about that. Yeah, I was just going to say, I think the team is incredible, so thank you for letting us just come alongside what you guys are already yep. doing, We're you and Emily and Lori and Thomas, and it's just an amazing team. Um, and everybody in this room, like, so inspiring. I love being in here worshiping with you guys tonight and on for forever now. Y'all so, here now. So Y'all here now. Y'all family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make family. some noise yeah. one, one but, more time. Yeah, so pumped. Yeah. But I... I love this age group. I think Brett and I both had really unique experiences, special experiences in college with Jesus. Like that's kind of when I was like, oh, my life's not about me. Um, and there is more to life and I have a purpose and an identity in Christ. And so that changed and everything. And you met me in college. And I, my, well, yeah. Hey, she doesn't remember it though. So there's hope for somebody here tonight. <laughs> that's another story You might story meet somebody and they won't, be, they won't remember you. It's cool. We'll, we'll get to it I don't the remember the meeting series. him the first time, whatever. I don't believe her. <laughs> we met after college. Anyway, yeah. all that to say, God totally changed my life. And I just believe so much in this age group and you guys and in what God wants to do in your lives. Um, and I just have always loved that uh, that special time where like literally it, your life is in front of you and God is saying, come with me. Like I have something for you. And yeah. so I'm really pumped for that. We're pumped to have you guys so much. Um, Reed wanted to say something. He couldn't be here tonight, but he didn't want this uh, moment to pass without getting to address you one last time. So why don't you check out this video? What is up, Passion City Young Adults? It's Reed here, and I wanted to update you on some big changes that have happened in my life and the life of my family that also affect Passion City Young Adults. Uh, and that is that I recently became the lead pastor uh, of a church in Gwinnett County called Gwinnett Church. Exciting, but it's also bittersweet because that means I will not be leading you guys. But uh, here's the good news is that God is faithful and he's still in charge and he's amazing. And you guys have some of the best leaders on the planet. And the team leading the way is amazing with Camilo and Lori and Thomas. And you're also gonna have Brett Yonker stepping in. And so you guys are in great hands. Uh, the future is bright. Please know that I love you. I believe in you. I'm praying for you and cheering you on. Uh, the, the best is yet to come, you guys. Love you. We love you, Reed. Thanks so much. And I love that this isn't built on a man, that this is built on God, on the Holy Spirit. Who, God uh -oh. is, what, uh -oh. what is this? Can What's happening this for here? A What's up, PCC, <laughs> uh -oh. YA? Yeah. I um, was in the room. Pastor Apparently. Brad Jones. Right <laughs> when um, you were introducing Brett and Ansley. And me and Michael were over there, and you were like, they pretty much built passion students. No, that, that's and not what I, I just, said. I, I, honestly, <laughs> that's not what I said. it just felt like a little, a little bit of a dig. Did and it sting? I was like, did that sting a little bit? Really how I said it. And get me on stage. <laughs> no, hey, I just, uh, Camilo did not know that I wanted to pop up. I didn't know I wanted to pop up, but I am like fired up by what's happening in this room. Are Woo! you fired up by that? Yeah. I know people are watching from all over the place, especially that are in the YA community, and they're just sensing so much that God is on the move, and this is phenomenal. So great job uh, to this team leading the way. We've got the two Louisville boys back over here. I know, I wasn't playing like getting on. I'm in my athletic gear, Christian. Just keep it down. Did man. you come okay. from Orange Theory, Brad? Uh, hey, don't, don't tell everybody I've been working out, but maybe. Um, <laughs> you, you're telling them with those guns, baby. <laughs> hey, I, I've been 
Uh, I, I do wanna say also a thank you to Reed and Morgan and their family for investing here. But I just wanna echo what's already been said. And I just wanna say it myself, that God is doing something. And we're sensing a huge shift in momentum. And there's been a story, I'm not gonna give all the details, but it's just totally lit me up. And I don't think it's been celebrated yet. Now is not the time, but it's somebody in our community uh, leading somebody else to Jesus just through reading the scripture together. Yeah. And I'm like, that, that chick, come on, can we just not get fired up about that? This person was questioning and wondering and said, hey, let's just read scripture together and let's just see what you think about Jesus after we read the book of John, I believe. And he's like, okay, cool, I put my faith in Jesus. And, and, and this, is, this is the beauty of what is happening in this generation, that God wants to set your heart and my heart a, a fresh a flame, right? Put a fresh flame in our hearts to know Jesus, but also to make Him known. And so this team has been doing a phenomenal job and um, I and, and our leadership team asked Brett and Ansley to step in to give some pastoral oversight. And it's just, the, the reality is, is more than anything, obviously Brett can sing and he can write and he's never asked me to co-write and Ansley's forced herself on a couple co-writes with him and Sean. You can ask him about Worthy of Your Name later. They could not figure out the word for one of the lyrics and then Ansley just yelled from the other room, uh, author, oh, yeah, author is it, was that? So she didn't get listed, Sean didn't want her, I guess, on the liner notes, but she helped write it. But no, the, the beating heart of these two and Camilo and Lori and Thomas and this team is to know Jesus and to make him known. And I couldn't be more fired up and grateful that they've said they would step in and give some leadership. There's momentum, Camilo. There is momentum in this place and it's by the power of the Holy Spirit for the name of Jesus. And can we just give it up for how good this guy's been doing? Let's kind of go. lead the charge. Come on. So Amen. anyway, I'm done. Here's your mic back. I'll, I'll hold it because I, I might have COVID. We'll, I'll we'll hold share. It. Right, I'm we done. can share. I'm done. We can share. Um, thank you. Can we give it up for Pastor Brad one more time? Pastor Brad in. Jones. Did not know that was happening. Brad Ansley, why are you so excited about, not what are you so excited about, but what are you looking forward to? What's kind of the vision as you head into the rest of the year and into 2021? That's just it. It's exactly what Brad was saying. That really, you know, everybody in this place, you guys are all, it's so cool. You know, cool is cool. But what I think is going to really separate this place from any other place in all of Atlanta for young adults is that young adults are encountering Jesus. And I believe that's happened already here in worship. Who's already encountered the power of God as they've been singing these songs? It's amazing. But you're gonna experience that in the teaching. You're gonna experience that in relationship with one another. That's why these family groups are so important because you're gonna to walk together in life. You're gonna open up the word of God together like in this story and he's going to change you. And so life change is what's gonna mark what God's gonna do in our lives over the course of this school year. So we're really, really excited. And I would love if we could, Camilla, if Ansley, if she could just pray for that this yeah. year, if we could just ask yeah. God, could we all pray for that together as Ansley prays? Yeah. Love to, thanks guys. Father, thank you so much for what you're doing in this space, in this place, um, in the, all the rooms that are watching, all the houses, all the um, parties, everybody who's gathered together tonight um, to just worship you and to know you more and to be together in community. I just really pray that your Holy Spirit would touch our lives in just such a unique way. You know each one of us. You know um, where we've been and you know where we're going and you love us so much. And I pray that that love, the, the high and the deep and the wide um, love of God would touch our hearts tonight um, in Jesus' name. And I thank you for that. And I pray that as a, a ministry and as a people, we would be moving together in faith. And I just pray that we would just take a step, whatever that looks like for us tonight, that we would take a step together, but also just in our hearts, would you just help us? Whatever is in our hands, whatever is in our hearts, would you help us lay it down um, to you tonight? Um, and I just pray for the message that Nate's about to bring. I pray for your word to go out from this place in power and not return void, and that it would plant so deeply in our lives that it would just be an overflow. Our lives would just be an overflow of what you're doing. And we love you, um, Jesus. We need you. And we pray all of that in your name. Amen. Amen. Give it up for Brent and Ansley one more time. So excited to have you guys in the mix. Uh, like Ansley just said, the one and only Nate Butler is in the building tonight, about to bring 
the word as we kick off a new collection called Kingdom Come. We're so excited about it. We made an Instagram filter. You can go on Instagram and search Kingdom Come and, and use that. Uh, we'll be sending out the collection guide right after tonight to everyone in family groups, or you can access it on our bio. Link is in uh, the description. But we're really excited to kick it off. Nate's about to come watch this video, and then Nate Butler, bring the word. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Come, thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Come on, we can do better than that. Come on, we can do better than that. Come on, come on, we serve a living God. We can do better than that. Last time I checked, he's, in an empty, he's out of an empty grave. Come on, come on. Guys, I'm so thankful to be here tonight. You know, um, these are some wild times. <laughs> and, you, you know, uh, it, a part of a tradition of, like, of the, the, the tradition that I'm kind of steeped in, you know, growing up in my dad was a pastor, my granddad was a pastor. And sometimes, like, those preachers they would actually, if a song was kind of raising up in their heart, they would just sing it before they preached. And it was just a little bit, and it's just something to kind of, I feel like the Lord may be saying in this moment. And it's really simple. I heard the Lord say, He's saying I am here. And I will supply your needs. I'm in the room. I'm in the room. Guys, you know, whenever two or three are gathered, he's in the mist. So I want you guys tonight to press into what it is that God has for us. There's something that he wants to speak. There's a shift in the atmosphere, like Pastor Brad was saying. There's something happening in here. There's a momentum. So tonight, I want you guys to lean in and to expect for God to do something tonight that he has never done before. Tonight, we are expecting for God to do something that he's never done before. Come on, guys. We're expecting God to do something tonight that he's never done before. We're going to start off tonight, guys. We're just going to jump right into it. John 4, 1. Jesus talking to a Samaritan woman. Samaritan woman. You guys know the story? The woman at the well. So I'm going to read this for you guys. Now Jesus learned that the Pharisees had heard that he was gaining and baptizing more disciples than John. Although, in fact, it was not Jesus who baptized, but it was his disciples. Look at him lying on Jesus. So he left Judea and went back once more to Galilee. Now, he had to go through Samaria. So he came into a town in Samaria called Sychar, near the plot of the ground Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Joseph's well was there. And as Jesus... Tired as he was from the journey, sat down by the well. It was about noon. When a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, Will you give me a drink? His disciples had gone into town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, You are a Jew, and I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? For Jews do not associate with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. 
Sir, the woman said, you have nothing to draw with and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob who gave us well this well and drank from it himself and also did his sons and his livestock? 13, Jesus answered, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water, of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, sir, give me this water so that I won't get thirsty and have to keep coming up here to draw water. He told her, go call your husband and come back. I have no husband, she said. Jesus said to her, you are right. When you say you have no husband, the fact is you have had five husbands and the man you know now is not your husband. What you have just said is quite true. Sir, the woman said, I can see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshiped on this mountain. But you Jews claim that the place where we must worship is in Jerusalem. Woman, Jesus replied, believe me, a time is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know, for salvation is from the Jews. Yet a time is coming and has now come when when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for they are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. God is spirit, and his worshipers must worship in spirit and in truth. The woman said, I know the Messiah called Christ is coming. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. Then Jesus declared, I, the one speaking to you, I am he. Just then his disciples returned and were surprised to find him talking with the woman. But no one asked, what do you want or why are you talking to her? Then leaving her water jar, the woman went back to town and said to the people, come see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could this be the Messiah? They came out of the town, made their way toward him. Skip down to verse 39. Many of the Samaritans from that town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I ever did. So when the Samaritans came to him, they urged him to stay with them, and he stayed two days. And because of his words, many more became believers. They said to the woman, we no longer believe just because of what you said. Now we have heard it for ourselves, and we know that this man really is the Savior of the world. Guys, let me explain what Jesus was stepping into. Because one thing we've always noticed, we knew that the Jews and the Samaritans, they just didn't get along. But nobody really knows why they didn't get along. So I'm going to give you guys a little teeny bit of history of why they did not get along. It's, it's really crazy. It's like the Game of Thrones. I don't know if you guys like watch that show, but it's like real life Game of Thrones. Saul became king, ruled over the tribes of Israel, right? Over some of the tribes of, some of the tribes, some of the tribes of Israel. David became the rightful king and brought all the 12 tribes together. Now, Solomon, you guys know, David's son, Solomon's main concern was he wanted to build the temple. But Solomon taxed the people really heavy, right? And he wasn't doing really a good job of holding all the tribes together because he really was concerned with building the temple and some of his wives. It's a gang of them. Solomon dies in 1930 BCE. His son takes the throne. His son's name is Jeroboam. So he's kind of like Scar. Well, no, his son's name is Rehoboam. His son's name is Rehoboam. But there's another guy named Jeroboam who's kind of like Scar from The Lion King. So he was trying to cause like a whole bunch of problems with Solomon, and then he ran to Egypt, right? But when Solomon dies, this guy comes back on the scene to get problems for Solomon's son. All right, so you guys follow me? All right, now check this out. The 10 tribes that were in the north, they were still mad because they were still getting taxed, and the temple 
was already finished. So they went down to Solomon's son and was like, hey, can we get some tax relief? And he said, no. Now, the wild thing about all of this is that guy that I told y'all about, the, the scar type guy, he was in the mix of all of them, egging the whole thing on. Right? So much so, it split. So now you got the 10 tribes on the north and two tribes on the south. Now, what's really crazy is the people from the north were like, you know what? We're not really feeling the people in the south, so we don't want to go down to that temple and we don't want to worship in that temple because we're really not feeling those people in the south. So you know what the guy was telling you about? He was like, you know what, guys? I'm going to build two temples here and I'm going to make golden calves. Y'all you know, know God don't. He don't like golden calves. I'm going to put two golden calves as those temples so you guys can worship to them. Now, a civil war is happening at the time. It's about to start happening between these two places, right? On the south side, you have the temple that's in Jerusalem, which was also the political capital of that time, and you have Solomon's temple. So now these two are going back and forth, going back and forth. Matter of fact, sons got involved, and when sons got involved, it was even crazier. I mean, it keeps going on and on, so much so to where, check this out, the Assyrians come in to the top 10 tribes, and they come in and take over that area, and they scatter the 10 tribes. And they also bring in the Babylonians to add more to the mix because the Babylonians, they knew, would actually crush the culture anymore. Now, a hundred years later, the Babylonians rise up and they take the south. Now the south is gone. And those two tribes, they scatter. Then the Persians come in 50 years later and the Persians, they liberate the whole area, and now the Jews are coming back. The Jewish people are coming back. But when they come back, they see these people up on the north side, and they're like, well, who are y'all? And they're like, we your cousins. <laughs> and now what you can see is, is that Jesus is now sitting with one of the people that was in the north side. He's sitting, check this out, in religious contention, check. Political contention, check. Gender contention, check. And racial contention. And Jesus finds himself sitting in this place. However, when the king sits down, the kingdom also shows up with him and also a kingdom way of doing things. You know, we're living in a time right now where we're always hearing about racial injustice and things that are happening. But Jesus, he does this conversation so masterfully. And this is what we're going to talk about. Because this is the thing. If you notice, the disciples weren't there. The disciples weren't there. Why? Because Jesus has to lead the conversation first. See, the disciples couldn't have been there first. They had too much bias. Disciples had too much bias. They were covered in, well, my dad has always did it this way, so I'm going to do it this way. My mom thinks this way, so I'm going to do it this way. Well, you know, my grandmother, she did it this way, so this is just how I think. I think this way because this is just how my whole family thought. And you know what's wild? Let me just break this down even a little bit more. 
This is like a person that comes to Thanksgiving dinner and nobody wants to eat this person's mac and cheese. You know why? No one wants to eat this person's mac and cheese because she got that recipe from her mother, her mother got that recipe from her grandmother, and no one is, and everyone is scared to tell her the truth because they think it's going to hurt someone's feelings. But the truth shall set you free. You got to change the recipe. No one wants to sit down and have a conversation because people think their feelings are going to get hurt. See, Jesus has to lead the conversation because this is why he embodies the fruit of the Spirit. He will lead in these matters of the heart with love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. I guarantee you if any of the disciples would have had this conversation as they watched any news cycle, they would have been too lit to have this conversation. They would have been leading this conversation with this woman in their flesh. And the works of the flesh are enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, and it will not inherit, hello, the kingdom of God. So if we don't inherit the kingdom of God, we will always miss his way of doing things. Which means we're going to produce bad fruit. In the body of Christ, we have too much bad fruit on the vine. People out here in these streets with a bag of bad fruit. <laughs> Giving a new meaning to I'm in my bag. <laughs> See, it's pruning season, y'all. We need to check our fruit. If you want to lead this conversation with race, you got to check your fruit. Do you love your neighbor as thyself? You got to check your fruit. You know, the reason why it's easy for us to discriminate against other people is because we discriminate against ourselves. Believing that I'm not worthy because of this. Believing the lie that I'm not worthy because of that. Believing the lie that the enemy is saying all the time that you're not worthy. So it's so easy for us sometimes to tell somebody else that they're not worthy because we look at our own selves that way. But that stronghold's coming down. Guys, listen, listen. You can be as white as you want to be. But let your whiteness be led by Jesus. You can be as black as you want to be. But let your blackness be led by Jesus. You see, racism boils down to pride and the ugly self-deception that I'm not worthy and neither are you. Guys, you got to be patient and stay at the well. Jesus at the start of this conversation, I mean, he's, he's, he's talking to this woman and she totally doesn't know what he's talking about. I mean, literally, she's like, I, I don't know what you're talking about. She's just like, man, are, like, are you offering me water? Are you like the Polar Springs guy? Like, I don't, I don't understand. Like, I don't know what you're talking about. Matter of fact, look, you see that I'm coming up here in the hot of the day, and you're talking about this. I don't know what you're saying. Look, if you can give me this living water so I don't have to come back up here again, let me know. I want that. Give me that water. And you know what's wild about this? Just because she didn't understand what he was talking about, Jesus still didn't leave the conversation. And think about this. If she couldn't understand Jesus, why do we get upset sometimes when people ain't, don't understand us? If she didn't understand Jesus and we're trying to have these hard conversations, right? How come we are willing to walk up from the well? 
But Jesus stayed at that well. And she stayed at that well. So Jesus is like, okay, you know, well, l- l- let me take this another way. So Jesus goes a little bit deeper. He, he switches it up. He, Cause see a lot of our conversations that we're having with our counterparts, sometimes they're just a little bit too shallow. Maybe we need to go a little deeper and a little personal. Like we need to ask Jesus to find yourself a well buddy. Find yourself somebody that's, that's not, that doesn't look like you and, and say, you know what, how about I ask you another type of question so I can go a little deeper into who you are. So Jesus just jumps into it and says, go get your husband. I mean, he's just going all the way there. But you know what I love? She says, you know, I, I don't have a husband. Matter of fact, he's like, I know you actually had five. And the guy that you with right now, that's not your husband. And she said, yes. So when you're faced with the truth of who you are at the well, how will you respond? When you're having a hard conversation about race, how will you respond in that moment when somebody asks you a question? Will you say, yeah, that's me. Yeah, I have a bias. Um, That's me. I have these thoughts. That's me. But the thing that I love about all of this, because once she was truthful about who she was, Jesus opened up to her and he became truthful, more truthful about who he was. You know, he had not revealed to anyone that he was the Messiah. She was the first person that he had revealed to anyone that he was the Messiah. So once she said, yes, that, that's me, Jesus was like, well, let me show you who I am. And so this is a perfect picture. So when we're sitting here and we're having this conversation and someone is actually asking you about yourself and you're asking somebody about themselves, the more transparent you are, the deeper you will go. Jesus shows us right here. But now, and I'm going to be honest with you. I need to get better at this. And, then, and I'm not speaking for the whole black race. But I know some black people, you, you try to ask them questions and they'd be like, oh, who want to know? But transparency always allows you to see another person's heart. You know, the thing I love about this too is that Jesus, as he's talking to her, talking about this living water, He gets her so excited about her changing her mind, she actually leaves the well with her vessel still there. And I love that because that's actually, uh, it's actually a painting, a great picture of she's actually leaving her old way of thinking there at the well. So sometimes, guys, when you come to these conversations that we're having with the opposite race, you have to be open-minded to to have your thinking change. The thing that she was doing her whole life, going to and back, to and back, to and back, with the same type of thinking. She left her vessel there at the well. And you know what happened? She actually became the vessel She became the vessel. And when she became the vessel, check this out. She went back and told people that looked like her. See, a lot of times when we come into contact with somebody of the opposite race, we're not telling the good stories. 
We're not saying, I just met somebody that goes opposite of everything that I heard about black people. That goes against everything I heard about white people. You got to come see the man that changed my way of thinking. And this is why Jesus has to lead the conversation. Because Jesus will change our way of thinking. Guys, God is not asking us for uniformity. He's asking us for unity. He's not telling, listen, he's not, all my black folk, he ain't telling us to stop playing spades. All my white folk, he ain't telling y'all to stop watching The Bachelor, wearing khakis and and pumpkin spice lattes. He's not saying that. God isn't saying that. But what God is saying, he's like, I love what it says in Romans 15, 5. Now may God, the source of great endurance and comfort, grace you with unity among yourselves, which flows from your relationship with Jesus, the anointed one. Now may God, the source of great endurance and comfort, grace you with unity among yourselves, which flows from relationship with Jesus, the anointed one. So basically, unity can only come from your relationship with Jesus. So if Jesus is not leading the way, hello, there won't be any unity amongst ourselves the name of that town was Sikar that word means end and a lot of us right now think that this is the end it's so much racial injustice this is the end it's so much political strife this is the end COVID is running around doing what it's doing this is the end But Jesus shows up what the story says, it's the end. And he creates a new beginning. And he fills our vessels with living water so we can tell someone else who does not look like us the truth about someone else that doesn't look like them. This is not the end. This is only the beginning, and the best is yet to come. You know, in this moment, I know we've been, we, 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 we can't miss the headlines, it's everywhere. The headlines are everywhere. I know you know you tired, I'm tired, everybody tired. But in this moment right now, I'm just gonna ask anybody just in their heart right now that knows they need to have a hard conversation at the well. Just just where you're sitting, you can close your eyes. And you know the thing that's at the well that you need to have the conversation with Jesus about. In some of your hearts, it may be bias. It may be discrimination. Some of it may even be pornography. See, you just put your problem of whatever it is right there, just bring it there at the well. Jesus wants to exchange your vessel to make you a clean vessel fit for his purpose. So I'm just asking, just even right now, just in your heart, I'm just going to pray and I'm just going to say, Father, I just, I just thank you now for what you're doing in our hearts. Only you, God, Only you, Lord, know what's on the inside of our hearts. Only you, Lord, know what's on the inside of our hearts. And we're asking you right now that you will please 
please, Lord, just, just clean our vessels, oh God. Speak truth, speak life, Lord. Lord, we come to you now as humbly as we know, Lord, and we're just asking you, Father, to, to blow winds of change in our lives, Lord. We need it, Lord. This, this country needs it, Father, and we know the only way that we can do this, Lord, is, is through you, Lord. It's through you, Heavenly Father. You have to lead the conversation, Lord. We have to have you in our hearts. We have to have you in our minds, Lord. We need to have you, Lord, going out before us, Lord, standing behind us on the side of each of us, Lord. We need you, Jesus. Only you, Jesus, can take charge of this conversation, Lord, that we need to have with each other, Lord, so that we may change this nation, oh God. And tonight, we're going to ask everybody for salvation. Because a lot of us tonight, if you don't know Jesus, you're not even in the conversation. If you don't know Jesus, you're, you're not in the conversation. See, Jesus is a conversation starter. So anyone at the sound of my voice that knows they need Jesus to to, to just get involved in this. They know that they have so much hatred in their life. Everything right now seems like it's falling apart. Well, I'm going to offer you right now Jesus, the only one that can save you. He can actually turn that your grave into an empty grave because that's what he did. And Lord, we just thank you right now that you're going to do it. So anyone right now, we're just going to pray and then you can just repeat this prayer in your own words to yourself. Father, thank you so much that your son died on the cross for me. For me, you came to take on my sins. You died on the cross for me and you rose again on the third day for me. And I believe on you and I thank you for coming into my life and making my life new. Even in the chat, you'll see in the chat, you'll see text some numbers to the chat just to let you know that you put your faith in Jesus. We want to know tonight if you put your faith in Jesus. Anyone in here that put their faith in Jesus, the text will come up on the screen, what you need to do to put your faith in Jesus. But we just want to say thank you tonight for all of you. For all of you that know they want to have this conversation, they're not trying to leave the well. Jesus is going to lead it. And we're going to be patient with each other. We're going to be kind to each other. We're going to love each other. In Jesus' name, amen.
Yes, God, like the psalmist says, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You've always been, you're always going to be. You're so great, you're so holy. So we do trust you, God. We believe in you and we surrender to you right here in this, in this space together. God, I'm thinking about everybody that's in this room right now and everybody that's watching online, engaging with what you're doing online. And I'm thinking about inside all of our hearts right now, God, there's something that you're saying, that's not who I made you to be. And it's your kindness and it's your compassion and your patience that was sitting next to us at a well where we went alone in our shame, but you would just enter in. And that's what you're doing right now. There is a new wind of change blowing in our hearts right now. So whatever that thing is in your heart, whatever that thing is in your mind that is just, you've been wrestling with for the last three months, just hand it over. Just release it and say, I'm going to trust you when I don't have enough. And I'm going to I'm going to bless you when I have more than I could ever need. And I'm going to choose today to trust and to surrender and to follow you. He's a kind God. He's compassionate and he's patient, but he's everlasting and he's mighty and he's holy and he's good. So Lord, we do, we give you our hearts, we give you our lives. And we're asking for that wind of change to blow in our community tonight. God, would we be uh, people of the kingdom, Lord? not people of the culture, but people who represent a better way. And would you use us, God, in these coming weeks, God, as we study your word, God, to be ambassadors for you on our campus. God, would you use us, Lord, to be an extension of your grace to someone else? We're available. And we're asking you to do amazing things in this city over this year. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. It's awesome. So good. <laughs> so good. Well, I don't know about you, but that's pretty awesome. Uh, what a night, young adults. I'm here for it. It's awesome. Well, we love you guys so much. If you're online, uh, we do want to say, you know, if you were to put your faith in Jesus, actually, even if you're in this room, we'd love for you to text in the number. And I got to be honest with you, I've heard it every week at church, but I can't remember the number. I think it's 33864. Yes, it is that number. It's, so text alive to 33864. We'd love to hear from you. We love, our team here would love to follow up with you. Uh, if you're online, we're gonna say uh, goodbye, but please uh, subscribe and join us and be a part of what God's doing in this amazing community. And um, if you're in the room, just hang tight just real quick uh, before you leave, but we love you. Say everybody, say bye to everybody watching online. Come on. No, say bye, like, like with your mouth. Like, say bye. See you later. Okay, see you guys. Bye.